Today we will look at an interesting aspect of the world of Formula One, which is prohibited advertising. These ads were pulled from promotion and advertising for many reasons and today we're going to take a look at that. There's one very unforgiving rule in the world of motorsport. If you want to race, you need a sponsor. A very wealthy sponsor willing to pay a large part of the considerable expenses associated with racing. But it was not always like that. Before the rich tobacco companies came into Formula One with brands such as John Player Special, Marlboro, Camel or Rothmans, Formula One was not nearly as big of money. The races were sponsored by the team owners themselves or, in earlier times, by wealthy industrialists and nobles who paid for the pioneers of motorsport. The first sponsors in the beginning of a new era. It is generally believed that the very first racing single-seater on the European continent, which went into a race not in the national colors, but in the sponsor's colors, was the Maserati Eldorado. It wasn't in a Formula One series race, and it wasn't even about the sponsorship of a big tobacco company or an alcohol manufacturer, but rather a sweeter addiction ice cream. At the time, it was a historical precedent that showed that the future of motorsport lies in sponsorship. From this point on, international racing opened up to financially strong companies, but it took some time before sponsorship fully took hold in the world of Formula One. The Rise of the Tobacco Industry Sponsor coloring appeared in the F1 series for the first time in 1968. John Love from the South African private team Gunston started in the South African Grand Prix with a Brabham car in the colors of Gunston cigarettes. In the very next race, at the 1968 Spanish Grand Prix, Lotus took up the idea, with none other than the brilliant Colin Chapman behind it. And then it went very quickly, one advertisement after another. May 12, 1968 is therefore considered the beginning of a new era of sponsorship in motorsport. A new era also began, which brought many iconic color schemes that went down in history. The new trend was also accompanied by a secondary effect, when fans could more easily recognize their favorite teams and drivers thanks to the individual colors of the cars. The principle was of course played by the tobacco companies, who thanks to their large profits could afford to spend a lot of money on the fund called Formula One. Imperial Tobacco was soon followed by companies such as Marlboro, Camel or Jatanes. And it worked perfectly. To this day, fans still associate a certain era of a team or rider with the color scheme and the team's main sponsor. Who wouldn't remember, for example, Aaron Senna in a black and gold Lotus John Player special, a McLaren with Marlboro logos. Michael Schumacher achieved his greatest successes in a Benetton sponsored by the Mild 7 brand or in a Ferrari with money from Marlboro as did his main rival Mika Hakkinen in a silver and black McLaren with West logos. Everyone has surely found their favorite and, thanks to it, quite possibly even their favorite brand of cigarettes. Or, for example, the sponsorship of the Durex brand in Formula One has been the subject of attention in the past and attracted the attention of spectators and the media. This marketing strategy brought the Durex brand a lot of media attention and created controversial discussions in the motorsport community. As the era of intrepid hotshots like James Hunt faded away, a new breed of rider came of age. A cigarette in the corner was no longer cool, modern formula pilots became professional athletes who, thanks to their strict lifestyle and physical condition, can be safely called the best athletes in the world. And the world out there outside the racing circuit has also changed. At the beginning of the millennium, the harmfulness of smoking became more and more public, which eventually resulted in a worldwide trend to curb the habit in public spaces. And of course this also affected the world of Formula One. In this respect, Formula One was most affected by the growing pressure to limit tobacco advertising, especially in the European Union. In 1999, this first meant a restriction where teams had to use a different livery of cars without tobacco advertising in European races. But some were smart about it. McLaren, for example, changed West cigarettes to the first names of its pilots, so the sides of the single seaters were decorated with the inscriptions Mika and David, but still brought out to resemble the sponsor's logo. Marlboro has established the Mission Winnow brand, which still bears a striking resemblance to the brand's signature logo, however, it refers to the company's other products as e cigarettes, as does British American Tobacco, which launched the A Better Tomorrow campaign promoting e cigarettes and other nicotine products. Today, Tobacco companies are on the decline, but they have been quickly replaced by a company producing another drug and a vice that is becoming more and more talked about sugary drinks. 
A separate and successful chapter of Formula One is being written by the energy drink brand Red Bull, which can even afford to run two teams. And what will Formula One cars look like in the future? We could expect that the increasing pressures for a healthy lifestyle will one day relegate sugary energy drinks to the dustbin of history. However, one thing is certain, no matter what Formula One looks like, there will always be big money involved and rich sponsors behind individual teams. And fans will still remember their favorite heroes mainly by the colors of their sponsors. Thanks for joining us today for this look at banned ads in the world of Formula One. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think about these historical and current advertising practices in the comments. Long live speed, long live Formula One.